Hi everyone! Um, I'm doing this video partially out of request and also because I kind of want to share with you um, my tips for transitioning and I guess how to transition to natural. These are just things that I do. Um, these things might help work for you, they might not work for you. Um, I'm not saying it's gospel or that you should follow what I'm doing, but um, these are just my tips on um, how to transition from relaxed to natural. And generally the, these are the steps that I took um, to get where I am today. I'm not fully natural. I'm about 15 months, almost 15 months post relaxer, but I haven't chopped off my relaxed ends yet. So that's where we are so far. So let's begin. Step one, um, set a realistic goal. Now this might sound kind of ridiculous, but I think there are times that we set goals for ourselves that aren't really realistic. You know, we think, oh, by six months from now, I'm gonna be mid-back mid -back length or something, something, and you're at neck length. Might, might not be the most realistic, realistic goal. The, the average, average person, person, average, average person, person, I don't say this is the truth across the board, board but the, the average, average person only grows about half an inch to one inch per month. It could be more than that, it could be less. Um, your health, your race, your, um, your genes, all of that has to do with how well your hair grows. But when I say setting a goal, I mean it might be long-term goals, might be short-term goals. I set a goal of transitioning for 24 months. I'm 15 months into it, I'm going pretty strong. There are times when I really can't stand <laughs> the fact that I'm transitioning long-term. Um, but if you want a big chop, after six months, if you want a big chop, after four months, after 12 months, whatever it is, just set a goal for yourself. With your hair regimen, set your goals. If you want to co-wash twice a week, you can make that goal. If you want to co-wash every other week, if you want to put protein in your regimen, whatever it is, you got to be consistent. Um, I start with my uh, goals. I try to wash my hair with shampoo once a week. I only do that because of where my hair is right now. You know, trying to get my scalp healthy, I have to use shampoo. Now, I'll talk later about this, but I don't use shampoo with sulfates anymore, and this is a very new thing for me. But um, just being consistent in your regimen is in extremely important. Step number two, document everything. And this sounds even sillier, but it's good for motivation. You know, if you don't have a lot of people around you who understand what you're going through, or if you feel like you can't share that with people, or even if you just want to have fun doing it, then documenting things is good. You know, writing it down, keeping a, a blog, keeping a journal, uh, taking pictures definitely, because it's nice to see your progress. I mean, if your goal is length, take pictures of your length, take pictures of your new growth, um, when it's all flat ironed, however you want to do. Documenting your journey will help you. It might, it might help someone else as well. You know, that's what I'm doing. But more, most importantly, you want to be there. You want to be able to motivate yourself. And that sounds kind of weird, but I mean every word of that. <laughs> Step number three, moisture is your friend. Um, all your ingredients should contain moisture. First, first and, and foremost, foremost, water needs, needs to be the, the first, first ingredient. ingredient in whatever it is you're using, your shampoo, your deep condition, your, your serums, your treatments, whatever you're gonna put in your hair, it needs to have water as the first ingredient. And then other ingredients to look for within the first five ingredients are shea butter, olive oil, coconut oil, panthenol, glycerin, um, natural things that will be good for your hair. Avoid things like mineral oil or lanolin or petroleum because those just kinda like coat your hair, coat your scalp and um, I found that as I'm transitioning, those products do not work for me anymore. I thought it was working for my relaxed hair. If anything, it was just helping my hair hang on because it was so damaged. Um, along with that, make sure you're drinking lots of water. Moisture from the inside is good, is excellent for your hair. So moisturizing on the outside with products and staying hydrated. I live in the desert, so drinking water is like a necessity for me. You know, we have maybe two inches of rainfall a year. I don't know, we had our first big rain, like two days ago, it was a big deal. But if you live in a climate where it's very humid in the summertime, if you get a lot of rainfall, you get a lot of snowfall, then drinking water might not be that important. You might be addicted to caffeine, I don't know. But make sure you're drinking water because it's, it's good for your hair, it's good for your skin, it's just good for everything. So water is key. Step number four, deep condition every single wash. If you're co-washing, if you're washing with a shampoo, deep condition. And a deep conditioner is not just your regular conditioner 
with a bag on your head and heat. A deep conditioner is a certain type of conditioner. I have started using uh, Shea Butter's Deep Treatment Mask. This is a deep treatment, not just a regular conditioner. Uh, I put this on my hair when it's damp or when it's wet and I usually mix it with jojoba oil because that's my favorite oil and it, it works with my hair. I mix that inside the deep conditioner, put a bag on my head, and then um, either put a towel over that or use my golden hot uh, bonnet dryer. And that kind of heat. For only 30 minutes, you don't really need to don't go longer than that. that. Some, Some people, people sleep, sleep in it, in it but, but uh, generally, generally speaking, speaking, half an hour is pretty, pretty good, good for your hair. hair. After, After a while, there's, there's nowhere else for the conditioner, conditioner to go in your hair. hair. And, and so, so um, why waste, waste your time? time? sitting with a deep conditioner on your head for hours on end. It's also important to have protein in your deep conditioners. I know moisture, everyone talks about moisture, but there is you, there is a risk of being over moisturized, over conditioned in your hair, and so finding products with a little bit of protein in them or doing a, pro, a deep treatment, a deep condition with a protein containing um, deep conditioner is important. So things to look for um, with this one, it's got sea kelp in it. It's a mineral, it's a plant, so right there, it's protein. Um, there's other products that contain protein. You know, keratin is one thing. Hydrolyzed silk is another thing. Ve hydrolyzed vegetable protein, any of those ingredients in your deep conditioner will infuse protein into your hair. Your hair is made of protein, so it kind of needs it. And especially while you're transitioning, you know, that line of demarcation between the relaxed hair and the natural hair, it's really weak right there. And I found doing periodic... Uh, protein treatments. Nothing too heavy just because my hair specifically is really fine and so I don't want to overdo it. Um, but having protein in your regimen is important. Um, but always err on the side of moisture. You know, you don't want to over protein your hair because that can be detrimental and you might, well, might as well just chop off your hair. But um, protein is another step, another part of that step. Step number five, protect your ends. Um, I could go far as far as to say protect your hair. Protect it from yourself, protect it from the sun, protect it from the wind. Your hair, as it's transitioning, can be very, very fragile. Um, finger detangling is important. I've learned that doing everything in sections, and I will probably carry this into when I'm fully natural, but doing everything in sections. Don't just dump your head in water or just think, oh, I can comb through it and never section it. But I usually section mine in four sections, detangling from the ends, working up to the root, and staying organized that way. But not rushing. You know, if you're in a hurry, you're not going to take care of your hair. And especially when you're first starting out, like the first six months of my transition was kind of cool because I had maybe like three inches of new growth. So my hair had all this volume, which was new for me. I had flat, lifeless, relaxed hair and I wasn't used to the volume, but I loved the volume. Um, the longer it got, the harder I, f I found that it was harder to detangle it. And you have to be really gentle, you know, finger detangling, tangling, tangling first, and then using a wide tooth comb. It doesn't really matter what kind of comb you use. If you're really cheap like me, you'll get a tangle tamer. I got this at uh, Sally Beauty Supply. It was probably like three bucks. It works for me. The teeth aren't that close together, but they're also not super far apart because my hair tends to, especially the relaxed parts, tend to stick together. So I don't need a comb with huge teeth. But find something that works for you. And you might even change a little bit, you know. Be a little flexible. Don't give in to the product junkieism that some of us do. <laughs> I am a, a victim of product junkieism. I'm actually working on curbing that, but um, I think everyone's going to go through that. So. so when you protect your hair, um, and you're protecting it from yourself, from the sun, whatever, you might opt to use protective styles. You might use weaves or wigs or uh, braids or something like that. I did some of these twists. I'm experimenting with half wig, you know, mainly because I get bored with my hair, but also because I want to kind of give my hair a rest sometimes. So um, learning different protective styles is excellent. Another thing that I do to protect my hair is using henna. And uh, I haven't done a video on this just yet, but using a henna gloss treatment has been really good for my hair. Um, I found that it strengthened the line of demarcation, so I wasn't experiencing a ton of breakage. And it's also kind of a protein treatment, but it's a really natural way to color your hair. I didn't originally do it to color my hair, but that was kind of like an added bonus. But I, d I did the henna originally to protect my hair, to strengthen my hair. So protecting your ends, protecting your hair can mean many different things. 
including, but not limited to, um, using a satin scarf when you sleep. I actually put a satin scarf on the back seat of the headrest on my car, so my hair that's rubbing up against it while I'm driving doesn't get messed up. Um, I use a satin pillowcase at night, and then I wrap my hair in a satin scarf when I go to bed. That, that way I know I'm clear all across the board. Um, I like to wear my hair down, and it's probably not the best thing for your hair. You know, your clothes can suck out the moisture. Um, but because it gets so hot here, most of the time I'm wearing like a tank top or something, and so I can get away with wearing my hair down. That might not be true for you, or your hair might not be long enough to touch your shoulders. In that case, then you're you're pretty good. But wearing scarves or wearing hats might be really helpful for you um, to line those with satin or to look for scarves that are satin or look for hats that have satin linings. Step number seven, and this might seem ridiculous and it's easier said than done, but be patient. Um, your hair's not gonna grow super fast. Um, it might grow super fast, but it, nine times out of 10, your hair will not grow as fast as you want it to. And if you're not really looking for length, if you just want hair or health, then that's fine. You could go for health and not worry about length. Um, honestly, I think we should go for health before length. It's hard for me to understand that sometimes because I really like the long hair. Um, but be patient with your hair. Be patient with yourself. Step number eight is research. And when I say research, I mean don't just Wikipedia something and be done with it. Like dive into what you're learning about your hair. Um, going onto forums, reading blogs, watching YouTube videos, just doing research on how to care for your curly hair. If you're new to transitioning, if you've done it before, if you're if you're new to the natural hair community, I suggest researching. That also means uh, learning from yourself. You know, sometimes you have setbacks, sometimes um, you're going, you can go, I usually go over my notes I've taken about what wash days were good, what products I used, what I can learn from that. So researching your own hair, it sounds really strange, but you can learn from yourself. You know, your hair will tell you what will work. Some people sing the praises of coconut oil. If your hair doesn't take coconut oil, if it doesn't work for you, then do something else. But uh, learn from your setbacks. You know, I I learned from uh, protective styling that you have to be gentle, especially with fine hair. You know, around my edges, I learned that even though I was really uh, gentle in twisting my Senegalese twists, they got caught on everything. And as that hair got pulled, my hair was pulling, being pulled out, and it just kind of broke off. So right around my edges, some parts it's just the curly hair, like there's no relaxed hair attached. And I learned from that. Um, I also learned when taking down Senegalese twists, you don't just dump water on your hair, you detangle through it thoroughly. You use conditioner and you don't use shampoo when you're taking out your twists, you know, because otherwise it can lead to dreading or matting. And I had a little bit of matting, but thankfully um, I was patient enough and got through most of the tangles. I still had to cut out kind of a little knot, but again, I learned from my hair. I know what not to do and what to do. Um, I also learned that I have I probably have dandruff and it's embarrassing to admit and not everyone knows it, but um, I've used sulfate shampoos for so long that I just thought, oh, well, I'm, I'm just destined to have an itchy scalp with occasional flakes. And uh, I started using other products. There's a, a product line that I discovered at Sally Beauty Supply called Ion, and I've been using the keratin line smoothing. The keratin is good, um, especially if I want to straighten my hair or use um, items with heat uh, because that the keratin kind of protects my hair. It's like a heat protectant, but also it doesn't have sulfates. And I like that about the, the product line. It's also pretty inexpensive too. Step number nine, don't compare your hair to anyone else. And I know this one is probably the hardest one, one of the hardest ones to do, but when you compare your hair to someone else's, you're expecting results that they're having. And she might have 4C hair, you might have 3C hair, you might have 4A hair, she might have 4B hair, I don't know. The point is, your hair is unique to you, how it reacts to certain pro products, um, how certain styles work for you, how uh, wash days go for you, they're gonna be different from everyone else's. And it's great to, to see how other people do things, it's good to, you know, learn from that, but ultimately you want to love your own hair. Um, that's, that's probably the hardest thing for me is learning to love my own hair. When it was relaxed, I definitely did not love it. You know, it was flat, it was dry, it was lifeless, and I hated it. And people would say things like, 
oh wow, your hair feels so much thinner than it looks. And you know, that's a really mean thing to say. But after a while I was like, you know, maybe they're right. You know, it might look full and full of body because I did a lot to make it look nice. But I learned that I wanted it to be healthy, you know? I didn't like that people would compare my hair and I was like, you know what, this is gonna be my hair. If it's gonna be, if it's gonna be my hair, it's gonna be good hair and everyone's hair is good as long as it's healthy. I'm just gonna say that, be done with it. But I mean, there are other things you could learn to do. Um, this list is in no way exhaustive, you know. Um, these are just things that I wrote down that I thought would be helpful for you guys. It's helpful for me to write it down, to see it written down, and then to look back on it and say, okay, this is what I did. This is what I can learn um, from um, past experiences. So I hope this was helpful for somebody. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them below. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for asking questions. And if you guys have any other suggestions or if you want clarification, just leave me a comment in the bottom. I'll do my best to um, answer that. Uh, but until next time, you guys, bye.